Hello, readers and watchers of awardcircuit.com. I'm your editor in chief and owner, Clayton Davis, here today on Circuit Breaker The Extras, joined by a wonderful, wonderful gentleman of the cloth of writing, Mr. Virgil Williams, Academy Award nominated screenwriter of Mudbound, here today, coming live from California, where he is listening to social distancing and staying inside. <laughs> How you doing, Virgil? I'm good, man. Thank you for having me. No, man. Thanks for coming on. Um, it has been a bananas few weeks. Uh, you know, everyone's yeah. just kind of maintaining. You know, tell me, tell me a little bit of just about like you know what you've been up to and what you know how this time's been for you. Actually, uh, also a little introduction to yourself because some some of our guys and 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 gals on here may not know how great or how talented you really are. So you can do a little introduction to yourself. Oh man, I appreciate that, man. Yeah. That's very, that's very kind of you. Uh, 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 I'm Virgil Williams. <laughs> I'm a screenwriter, and I, you know, and I, and, it, and I live in LA. And I'm got to be honest, man. I kind of lived like this before. I'm a little bit of an introvert. I'm a, I'm a real just, you know, I'm a writer. I like being inside. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, this is not, a, this is not a giant, <laughs> a giant lifestyle change. Once I sort of left network TV, I, I kind of been trying to stay inside <laughs> in front of my <laughs> computer. Yeah. But it's scary. It's scary. I'm born and raised in Chicago. I got, I got my, hold on a second. Oh, are you wrap it up right now? Okay. Because it is baseball season, I guess, yeah. officially. Yeah. And, uh, how, how you doing with that, by the way? Is that, is that like, you know. <laughs> Bro, I'm hurt, dying yeah? without sports. I'm, I'm dying without sports. I'm dying without baseball. I'm dying without some hoops. Yeah. You know, and this is a good time of the year because, you know, the NBA is heating up. Baseball's yeah. just started. And uh, it's, uh, you know, ESPN, you know, I'm watching dodgeball and, you know, a lot of UFC. Yeah. <laughs> you just watch yourself that you feel like, like I'm not supposed to be watching this stuff right now just to keep yourself entertained. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, anything, yeah. but it's hard. It's hard. It's, it's, you know, it's a, it's like a, you know, Chinese water torture heart. Yeah. I, I know, um, you know, we, we were, we were talking uh, earlier uh, in the week, you know, trying to get you on one of our weekdays. Um, I know you said you're in a virtual writer's room, so I think it'd yeah. be, it'd be great to, uh, especially for some of our, uh, listeners and, and watchers, what is it, um, you know, w when you're, when you're a screenwriter right now, and I think people assume like, especially w w when you're a person just who writes a lot of stuff by yourself, you know, you're just in a room by yourself and you do your writing and that's it. But you're writing for a TV show right now. So there's a, a collaborative effort with, with everyone. How do, how is that dynamic working right now? It's been great. It's been really great. Uh, a buddy of mine named Ben Watkins gave me a call and he's putting together a little, little mini room. It's actually a mini room. The show's not picked up yet. Okay. You know, um, so I don't want to talk too much about yeah. it cause I don't want to jinx it. Um, yeah. cause it's fantastic. Um, but it's a little mini room and he's a great guy and he, uh, uh, put together, a room full of great people. Okay. Uh, it's funny. We had two weeks together face to face and the, you know, the, the last week or so week and a half or so two weeks have been, uh, on the zoom. And I was reluctant. I was like, this shit is not going to, Oh, my lad, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you can curse. Man, it's I was right. like, yeah, it's like, this, <laughs> it's not going to work. I was like, this is not going to work. Cause a room is a, like a pretty kinetic, a, a working room is a kinetic sort of, uh, experience but it's been shock it's been shockingly efficient and shockingly effective and i really think that uh in the future it would be wise to have you know friday and monday should be from home day and you mm -hmm. can be wherever you want to be if you want to yeah. go out of town you can be out of town but we can work this from home there's no reason to come in there's no reason to get on the freeway there's no reason to be apart from your family you know, unless you want to be apart from your family yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh, uh you don't need to do that so you know that's it's a very it's been a very positive experience Mm. All right. Um, so uh, talking and, and for, for our, uh, our watchers right now, we only have, we don't have Virgil for a full normal hour. So I'm going to stay on a little bit after, uh, with you guys take, uh, any other, uh, you know, questions that filter in. So we're going to have uh, Virgil for about half hour. Um, so, uh, Virgil, you and I met, uh, on the red carpet yeah. two years ago. Critics choice, uh, I think, yeah. Critics, Critics choice. You were yeah. nom you were nominated for uh, Mudbound and adapted screenplay. Uh, history uh, knows you went on to get an Academy Award nomination. 
uh, for the for the film. Um, one thing, just repping right away, uh, you and I, both Puerto Rican and Black, like yeah. just had this like uh, instant connection because we don't see our reflection Nobody. often in you know, definitely in front of the screen, but definitely in the behind the, you know, in, in those types of areas where you're directing and, and writing, um, what, what has been your, uh, game plan, I guess, uh, going into this industry when you don't see a lot of yourself in it, you know, how are you, uh, making sure that your story is being told in, in all these different types of ways? That's a fantastic question. You know, it's funny, this this writer's room that I'm in now, I realized that I, it was the first time I'd been in a room with another black male. Oh. First time in my career. Uh, uh, black women, yes. Uh, yeah. a, you know, Asian, uh, 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 never, never anybody Latino, Latina, Latinx, yeah. ne never. Yeah. Um, hopefully I'm remembering that correctly. Somebody should yeah. be like, dude, what the fuck? Um, yeah. But there, I, there's never been anybody. So, but my strategy has always been. Um, I think you know, in the beginning, it was like work, work my ass off, like don't yeah. like like grind. You know what I mean? That's that's it's a that is uh, emblematic of where I'm from. Yeah. Uh, and 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 the stock that I come from is just just grind. Don't get outworked. Um, sort of uh, clinging to faith uh, has been another uh, tenant that yeah. has really uh, uh, served me. And it's, that's, that's a hard, that's easily said, but um, not necessarily easily executed. That all clean the faith piece. And then sort of really um, recently, uh, I've gotten to a place in my career and I, and I wish that I'd found it earlier, but you know, things happen for the reasons that the way that they're supposed to happen. Yeah. Um, I have really started uh, to try um, to really shift my focus from uh, being result-based Okay. I've really tried to shift my focus to um, being uh, in, for wholly involved in the process and the quality of the work that comes from the process. And that's super difficult. Yeah. That's super difficult in this industry where affirmation, external affirmation is necessary to, you know, to feed your kids. Man. Like I, I need somebody to say that's, that's good. So I can feed my people. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, it is a sort of a philosophical mental practice that has served, that has been serving me well to really r r write to write, no matter what it is. You know, I just and finding these little pockets of that. Um, even when I was on Criminal Minds, I wrote a show called Criminal Minds for six seasons, and yeah. that was sort of a mercenary effort on, on many levels. You know, and I would have to find these pockets of availability to really lean into the craft, the gift, the the that sort of I don't know that communal experience that I have with you know with the spirit, with God, with the muse, whatever you want to call it when I'm writing. Yeah. If that makes any sense whatsoever, I've been yeah. locked in. So I feel like I'm like, I might be it, talking kind of crazy. It, no, no, no. It, it definitely does. I'm, I'm looking right now. I'm looking at, you know, what your, you, you know, IMDb tells our whole story allegedly, you know, about what, but it never accounts for the grind in between. Right. So like criminal minds on here, but what about those years up until Criminal Minds came into your lap? Like, how long have you mm -hmm. been writing uh, for? Well, my first pro job I got was on a show called Twenty Four uh, in two thousand one. Yeah, and, and I have been blessed uh, uh, enough to basically be been from there. I, I just kept jumping to these big blue chip network shows with these giant episode orders from twenty two to twenty four episode orders. Yeah, um, and I, there have been I haven't had many years where I haven't been working. So that was all about navigating what it was like to be on a staff, what it was like um, to write under duress and under pressure and, and not to write uh, for sale, which most of us are doing on, on many yeah. levels, but to write for, sh to shoot, to write something that, that could actually be shot in eight yeah. days. Yeah. Um, uh, with the budget and with all that. So it was all about learning that system. Mm -hmm. So, that, when, okay, go ahead. So no, 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 go, go, go. No, I was going to say, so when, you know, g getting into the industry, obviously, you know, you got, you got your big break 
and I, and I think it's always very important because you and I, I are very much from, uh, I would say, cause we're not from, this, we're not from the same neighborhood, but we're from the same mm-hmm. neighborhood, you know, yep. like, um, I, I, one of my big qualms, I guess my big things that my temples, I stand on quite often is that I, I got into the idea of writing so late in my life because in, in, in my neighborhood, there wasn't a creative writing class. There wasn't like all these things for, for me to get exposed to. The only thing I could physically see is actors on screen. I knew I loved film, but yeah. I could see actors, but I never knew what was going on behind it. Like in the, in the intricate sense. And that part was really, I, I won't say it didn't put me at a disadvantage, but I, I was behind the eight ball and I still am even in, to this day, like I am discovering films that, you know, when I have conversations yep. with people, they're like, Oh, like I saw eight and a half when I was a little kid. I'm like, I didn't know eight and a half exist- existed. until yep. I was like 27 years old, you know? Yep. Um, so where, where did writing, where did you get the passion from? Where did that start its growth in you? I, um, when I was a kid, a little kid, I'm about to show my age. So um, when I was in Chicago, in third grade, I had a really great teacher. And I think that any of us that, you know, have sort of, I don't know, made any sort of a sense, there's always that figure somewhere yeah. back there, someone who there was like, one. yo, I see you. I see you. Yeah. Um, and she said to my mom, you know, I was in, I, I played, I, I was the, 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 the evil king in our, uh, the third grade rendition of the evil king. So I was the title mm-hmm. character. Okay. Um, and she said, you should act. He's got, he should go act. And my mom, do you want to act? And I said, sure. And then, you know, we did the whole thing. We got the headshots and everything. And I ended up, uh, I got cast in uh, the Blues Brothers, which shot in Chicago. Oh, okay. And it was. I don't think uh, I knew this. Oh my God, it was crazy. Uh, it was yeah. those three days. Oh, it's a great Oscar story too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I ran into, I ran into John Landis at the Oscar awards, at the Oscar luncheon. So, but rewind. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. When I was eight, um. I was in that movie. So I was on three days on set when I was eight years old okay. uh, and my mind was blown. I mean, my mind was absolutely blown. And I was already the kid who was sitting underneath the TV first thing Saturday morning, back when cartoons came on only in Saturday morning yep. or after school. Yep. Uh, I was always that kid trying to go see movies. My parents let me see movies that I probably shouldn't have been watching early, like mm-hmm. The Exorcist, like yep. Alien. And my mind was just blown. Yeah. Uh, so I was always that kid anyway. And once I saw that, once I saw that sort of army on the move and like this machine that made these movies, and once I saw and that what 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 went into making these images, I was I, I knew at eight that it was that was it that was it. I was I was doing something forever. I thought that was I, for years. I thought that was acting, and then I turned to adolescence, uh, and then on sub subconscious level, I realized. You know, man, really, really great actors. Look, man, we tell them what to say, where to stand, what to wear, what time to show up, what they, I mean, we tell the really great actors are comfortable being uncomfortable or comfortable being, I think, in a state of having relinquished control, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, and that wasn't my zone. I was like, yeah, no, 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 not for me, Uh, subconsciously. Uh, And then cut to uh, end of high school. I was like California or bust. Uh, SC. I got into SC. I got rejected from the film school. Okay. But I got into SC, so I went to SC. Um, so that's what lit my. That's really what. And and then, I since I didn't get into film school, I knew graduating uh, that I would need something on my resume. So I got internships before I got out. And I worked at great places. I worked at New Line Cinema when New Line was on fire and like Mike DeLuca was like the young dude, yeah. like just blowing it up. I worked at, and then I worked at Orion Pictures when Orion was making yeah. well, like Dances with Wolves, Platoon, yeah. like all those really awesome, awesome movies in the day. And they had free screenings. That was like, I, I was like, hell yeah, I work yeah. I get a free movie, free movie. And I get to bring a friend. Yep. Fuck out of here. Yeah, what time yeah. you need me there? Yep. So. The day that I read the script for Silence of the Lambs and then two hours later saw the film, it was like, Fish. that was it. That was, that's when I knew I was like, Oh, Oh yeah. I like, can I, do that. Like not yet, but like yeah. I could totally do that. Like you felt um, it. I, I felt it in, in, in my bones. And that's sort of, that's the, that's the sort of short version of, of how that went. And then I just started writing and, 
you know, just mm-hmm. kind of stayed in the game. So I, th- I think this is uh, important to, to, to ask here. And it, this even applies to someone like me. You know, people always feel like they have that one idea that's in them, right? That, that like, I could write a movie. Right. I have an idea of a movie and then they have it, right? And oftentimes, I'm sure it happens to you a lot because it happens to me and I am not a screenwriter. People are like, I have an idea for a movie. Would you hear my idea for a minute? Because it's a movie I really want to write. And then I and then I listen to it and I try to be, you know, as sympathetic to like wanting to listen to them as, as possible. And I think it's important for us to listen. But I'm like, go write it. Yeah. Like if, if that's really what you want to do, then go write it. And it's easier said than done. But what would you say to someone that wants to sit down and write a and write a movie? Like or write a TV show or has this idea, this burning thing that's inside of them? Because sitting down for five minutes, let alone days and weeks to get this and and to and to flush it out and really months, like, you know, like, like months it just took me a year, year. Right? Years. yeah like, um yeah wow what would i say wow uh good luck um yeah. <laughs> uh you know it really i would say the first thing that i would say is that uh um a routine is a much better friend than inspiration so, you know, when you turn pro, it's like, like it's not even like, fuck your inspiration, man. Like, we got to go shoot this. Like, yeah. I need some pages. And they got to be good and they got to be on time. Yeah. Or else it's going to cost us an arm and leg to shoot this. Yeah. Um, so get a routine. Sure. Discipline, yep. get I think a, I'm always big, big on with people. Yep. yep. And if that means, I, you know, I, I, I have a ritual. Like, build a ritual for yourself. Like I straight up, there's a window in the in the back of my bathroom, and it's very lovely. It looks out of my yard. It looks out of some palm trees. I'll sit there and make myself still, burn a little sage, say a little prayer. Um, I've really had to try hard to sort of all the work that I do is not, again, is that result based thing. No matter mm-hmm. what I'm doing, even if it for, is for a result, even if I'm writing something that needs to be shot and needs to be good, it's still about let's go, let's go give this up. Like let's go do our best. Yeah. Let's go use the gift. Let's go. Let's go give it up to, you know, whatever it is you believe in. Mm-hmm. You know, if it, if it's God, then it's God. If it's if you're you know an ancient Greek, then it's you know the muses. If it's if you're an egomaniac, then it's give it up for yourself. You know what I mean? But give it up to something, um, and make it about that, um, and do that every day. Yeah. And do that every day that till it's done because it's really like building a. It's really about a brick a day. You know, if you can put a brick a day and you do that for a consecutive amount of days, the consecutive piece is the important piece. Yeah. You're going to fuck around. You're going to turn around and you're going to have a, a building. Yeah. You know, and it really has to be about that like every day. Take a day off. That's important too. Mm. Rest. Give yourself a rest. Yeah. Yep. Get yourself some rest. Step away from it for a second, but build some sort of routine where there's a routine. Yeah. As and, and, whatever you can do. And it's important that you say that. I think, I think what's happened is um, uh, we, I think as, as the internet and film Twitter and everything like that has really blown up and, you know, these, you know, uh, people are passionate about film and television. They like, you know, look to you guys for inspiration. They, they hear from the Virgil Williams right now and they're like, Oh, you know, take your time, you know, it may take months, whatever the case may be, but they love, and I'm going to you, and this is no, you know, disrespect to him out there, but they hear like the Darren Aronofsky stories of like when he wrote mother and he wrote it in a weekend, he went, that's, wrote what, mother he and that's what he says, that's what he says. but we don't, we don't know what that they hear that. And they're like, Oh, I want to bang it out in a weekend and just, and, and, you know, mother, like there are people who love it and there are people who don't or whatever, but people like hear that and they're like, Oh, he can do it like that. I want to be able to do it like that. Cause we're in a status of now. In, yep. the, in the industry. So yep. and I think that's what kind of gets ruined because then when guys like you say, take your time, they're like, I don't want to take my time. I want to want to be like Aronofsky. I want to bang it out in a, in a weekend. Well, I, I never, I don't, I, you know, I didn't just say take your time. I think be patient yeah. is a better way to look yeah. at a reframe. Be patient. Um, Cause you know, it's how long is a rope? It's as long as that rope is. Like, when's it going to be over? Like this pandemic thing, you know, yeah. when's it going to be over when it's over? You know what I mean? So um, that's that's also that that sort of result based piece. Yeah. Like you can't, it can't, it is going to happen when and how it happens. All the only thing that you can control is the amount of time you work on it and the quality of the work that you put in. 
like for real. And, you know, I can almost guarantee if Aronofsky, if he really did write that in a weekend, I can almost guarantee that shit was in his head for years mm-hmm. for a long, he had it worked out already. Yeah. And I guarantee he was doing all the work mentally. And some cats are like that. Maybe, you know, maybe he is. Some cats can sort of do the, the mental math in their heads and then spit it out. You know, I, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't got that ability. And I, and I sort of, you know, I'm a little um, skeptical of anybody who says that they can because yeah. I'm pretty intimately con- I'm connected to this process and have been for years. And I'm like, yeah. hmm. Wow, yeah. that's in, that's interesting that you have that superpower, yeah. Yeah. you know. But, but even but I think what's important for the and the listeners here, and if you don't have that superpower because it's that's a superpower, good. it's okay you don't. Yeah. But you know? I guarantee, I guarantee that dude has had that story that's been percolating in his head forever, yeah, forever. So the ability to knock it out on a weekend came from all the whatever came before that, and that's all part of the banana. You know, part, yeah. I think part of the problem is with that like this attitude of now you mentioned that now everybody's i i'm sort of a guy that is i'm building a chain like that's what i'm doing and uh, people are very focused on the link mm-hmm. people are people are, i think it's dangerous to, to start to identify with um to really start to i'm not saying your projects shouldn't be personal i'm not saying they shouldn't come from the deepest recesses of your inner self yeah but you know it should be about the if it's if it it has to be about the craft because if it's about that singular project, because they all find a way to break your heart, they yeah. all do. Mudbound was a dream, but there are parts of that that broke my heart. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, and it has to be about the work. In feast or famine, that's the only thing that matters. That's yeah. the thing I learned getting nominated for an Oscar is what taught me that. Oh, was was that? Yeah, talking about like the nomination process, um, and there there are people who will argue, quite frankly, that you know, that type of awards recognition can sometimes ruin a person creatively because they feel mm. like they've gotten the validation that they've done the best that they can mm. and then they get lazy after that. I mean, we, we see that kind of in people who get Oscar nominations and everything after that has been, they'll, they'll never, re, they never hit their peak again. But you're continuously hitting the grind and you're working and, and you are, and I'm looking again, looking at your IMDb here, you don't just do the writing part because you're producing as well. Is there, is there anything in you that really wants to direct a big feature like, yeah. you know, that you wrote that's like, yep. that it's, that it's your, everything about it is your, your creative control. Yeah, that's next. That's, that's next. next. I'm, I'm sort of at the, I'm at the beginning of that, um, transformative part of my career yeah. um, for sure. And the nomination absolutely um, kicked open that door for me yeah. uh, because it provided opportunities, provided certain opportunities for me. Not, it's not, I'm not saying people are saying, Hey, or come direct this thing, Virg. but what yeah. I am saying is it sort of, it, it allowed me to uh, shift gears and to um, switch lanes oh, okay. um, in a, in a very positive way. So the answer to that is absolutely. That's, yeah. I just, I just finished a, 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 a what will hopefully be my directorial deb- debut. It's a Western. Um, oh man. Yeah. We, we yeah. have a writer on staff, Mark Johnson. And he, we just, our last podcast last week, we're talking about the great Westerns of all time. It was his favorite genre. And he yeah. is a sucker for that. So now somewhere he's watching this and he just yeah. fell over and killed over. That's awesome. Well, I hope, I, I hope he likes it. I hope, yeah. I hope. More, more than anything, you have to impress yeah. Mark Johnson in this because, yeah. like, that's yeah. the that's the process. Oh, wait, I, 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 yeah, I have to give you the uh, opportunity to tell the Landis story of seeing him at. Oh um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm at the Oscar luncheon. You know, like eyes, like are just freaking out. You know, yeah. uh, and I see John Landis, and I look to my wife and I say, "Oh my God, I have to say hello. I have to say hello to this man." How are, these? Have you seen him in a, in a while? No, like no, no, okay. no, no, like not since then. Oh really? Okay. Uh, yeah, not not since then. Um, yeah. uh, uh, I, these all this whole that whole circuit run, you know. So you're at those yeah. parties, you're at those things. It's yeah. this really weird series of like thirty second to minute long conversation, <laughs> yeah. punctuated by interruptions. Yeah. And people just come up and just start talking. And you're like, yeah. I'm sitting here talking to this dude. Like, yeah. Excuse me. You know what I mean? So you know that you have to sort of strategically like wedge your way in and mm-hmm. like kind of you know wait for the. It's a weird. It's a, it's weird. Yeah. So he's talking to Patton Oswalt and they're talking for a really long time. Okay. Like a really long, nobody's interrupting. They're not breaking. 
we're standing there, like oddly close. It's getting. My wife is like, "Okay, it's getting a little weird now." now like we're just standing here. Like we're standing right here. We have to interrupt. We're, 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 so, we're doing wives sometimes in that situation. Uh, they're like, like they, yeah. they're like, they're like, almost like right? they're almost like your um your hype man. They're like, "Go, yeah. like come on, <laughs> go ahead." Yeah, we're standing there, bro. Like, come on, man. So I go over and I say, "Excuse me." And I put my hand on Lannis's shoulder, and he looks at my hand like, "You better, like, who are like, you? I don't know. You better get uh-huh. your hand on my shoulder." And I say to Pat, and I go, "Hi, Pat. My name is Virgil. You know, you're wearing the thing. You're wearing the name tag. You know, yeah. like, you know. Nominated. I go, my name is Virgil. Uh, I got nominated for a Writers Guild Award. I'll see you next week. I wrote Mudbound. He goes, "Oh my God, Mudbound!" And I go, "John, I had to come over. I actually said, Mr. Landis, I had to come over and say hi to you because some forty years ago." You cast me in the Blues Brothers as one of the orphans. And if you don't do that, I'm not in this room. And he looks at my hand and he smiles and he goes, you just saved the picture. <laughs> so, so I guess what that means, like, right? Like, 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 now it's okay. You're touching my soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Patton's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You guys catch up. And he goes. And I, huh. and I tell John, my, you know, I, I, I wrote Mudbound. I'm nominated. And like, you nominated me, man. That was the thing that lit the fuse. And I had to, I had to come over and say thank you. And he goes, come here. And he dra- and he and he pulls me over to his wife, whose name I think it's Deborah. Her name escapes me right now. She's a a governor uh, and a, a costumer and the okay. a governor and the writers branch and uh, the costumers branch okay. of the academy. She's nom- She got nominated for maybe coming to America. Uh, I'm going to help you out. Go ahead. You can. Yeah, you can- is it Deborah Landis? Anyway, um, he go he drags me over there. He goes, tell her the story. And I tell him, I tell her, I go, you know, so your husband cast me as an orphan of the Blues Brothers. And, and if he doesn't cast me in that movie, I'm not standing here right now. And uh, I start. It's, it's Deborah Nat, uh, Nadelman. Nadelman. Yeah. Nadelman. Nadelman. I got the first name right. Yeah, got you got it right. You're right. You're okay, good. good. Because I'm sort of name blind sometimes. Um, and so that's why he he's not there. He's not even in that room if she's not a governor. Yeah. Um, and I start, as I'm telling her the story, I start crying. I mean, uh-huh. I start, you know, and there's a couple people around. And I go, oh, they're coming. I can't stop them. And yeah. I go, and I just say, I confess, if he's not, if he doesn't cast me, I don't know where I am. I don't know. I'm certainly not in here. And he, oh, you, you did it. You had you had it. Your talent. Yeah. I go, yes, 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 yes. But you know, if you don't see me mm-hmm. at eight and go, he's one of the guys out of the thousand kids. He's one of the yeah. ten guy, ten kids out of the thousand. You know, and uh, that was for me a profound moment of full circle. It was a profound. You just end up uh, back in the same room with him. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. nuts. Oh, yeah, man. and he's taking pictures of me, you know, with me. Yeah. You know, and then Jordan Peele tweets me the next day. He goes, Landis sent me this. And Landis, and because when I was talking to John, he yeah. goes, I remember you. I remember you. You had a red shirt. You had a red yeah. shirt. I'm like, that's right. He goes, you look yeah. the same. Landis had gone home, found an old still from the Blues Brothers, and then put it side by side with a picture he and I had taken. And then sent it to Jordan Peele. And then Jordan Peele sent it to me. And he's like, bruh. And I was like, dude, like my mind is blown. I'm shook. Oh, and man. so that was cool. That was, that was cool. That was amazing, cool. man. Yeah. Oh, that was, man. Yeah. Um, I, I know we have like one more minute with you. Uh, uh, I'm going to like, they can, I'll, I'm going to like, there's, they're, they're in the next room. I'm having a pleasure. Talk, it's a pleasure talking to you. Oh, so okay. I can, I'm going to be a little late oh, for them. Yeah. Oh, you know, okay. Well, this yeah, is God will forgive me. This yeah. is God will forgive we, me. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you. So, uh, what one thing I, w- I always have up in front and give you the opportunity, like, want to know what what movies? What what's the movies that did it for you, man? Like, what were the ones that like just blew your mind off? That like, I mean, you mentioned some of them already, like Aliens and Exorcist. But yeah. like, what what are the what are the, what's the one that that lit the fire on passion? Like, what what were the what were some of those? Yeah. Um... Man, I got Silence of the Lambs. That's that one I mentioned, yeah. I mentioned before. I mean, it, that really, uh, a lot of those Orion movies really lit me up. Uh, Dances with Wolves is one of my favorite movies. I, I can't, it's hard for me speaking, not to watch the, it. Speaking of the Western genre. Yep. What, what's, yep. So let me let me let Mark fall in love with you a little more. What's some of your favorite Westerns? Some of my favorite Westerns? Yeah. Uh, uh, um, uh, Buck and the Preacher, I love. Um, yeah. I love Unforgiven. Um, you know, it's hard for me now, you know, I, I watched like a lot of Clint Eastwood as a younger guy and I watched a lot of Clint Eastwood as an older guy, you know, yeah. and now I have some, you know, of course I'm infected by some politics, you know, yeah. like, outlaw yeah. Josie Wales is yeah. a Confederate soldier, man. You know? yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I'm rooting for that dude. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, I'm going to think of more as soon, yeah. <laughs> as soon as we get off. Yeah. The fall, but you know, Unforgiven. And, and are you, are you a big fan of too. are you a big fan of some of the older ones like uh, Stagecoach or Oxbow Incident or True Grit? Uh, uh, True yeah. Grit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like True Grit. I can get with a little. I can get with. I can forgive John Wayne. I mm-hmm. actually, I, I, I can stomach. Uh, I like the I like the Coen Brothers True Grit too. I enjoy mm-hmm. the look of it. Yeah. I enjoy the feel of it. I enjoy the location of it. It was uh, shot uh, uh, um, in a place called Las Vegas, New Mexico. Oh, okay. um, so I like the, I'm familiar with that little town. Cool. Um, so I like looking at it. I just, I like the visual of it. Um, God, what else is there? I actually have this, I have this, like, it just dawned on me. I have a really fun story I wanted to tell you about, uh, about this. I asked a similar question. So uh, during Mudbound, uh, I did the press rounds and I had it and everyone was there that day. Like, you know, Mary Jane, uh, Jason Clark, everyone. Mm. I did. I had interviews with everyone the day. You weren't there though, like for the New York uh, round. Probably writing something great <laughs> one day, but uh, but I, I I went through the entire cast and kind of asked them like, you know, what some of my favorite movie movies were. And I was talking to Mary J. Blige and I asked her like, you know, what what poster would have been on your wall as as a kid, mm. you know, that that you love. Of, of like, you know, the, the, your heart like that you were in love with, not like by talent, by looks. And she said, Paul Newman. And I was sure. like, and I was like, really? I was like, which Paul Newman? I was like, like the, like the hustler Paul Newman? And she was like, cat on a hot tin roof Paul Newman, yeah. like sure. all day, like she's in love with. Cool. So most surprising thing I've ever learned from her. But uh, what, what were some of your like inspiration, Ooh. love, interests of... Uh, of the young Virgil Williams years that you were like, and I, I still think Selma Hayek amazes me. Like oh, there's, there, she's, she is timeless. Yeah. She's such a, she could have been a movie star in the forties, fifties. Oh, yeah. She's just, um, you know, the thing that did it for me was the snake dancing from dusk till dawn. Oh yeah. <laughs> After that, I was like, she's perfect. Yeah. This is so appropriate. It's so appropriate to talk to you right now. Cause we literally did a radio show right before this, our other podcast. And we were talking about nineties movies, got into a whole big thing about mm-hmm. it. And then we got into a discussion about wild things and Denise Richards and mm-hmm. Neff Campbell of the nineties. And we were like, yeah. like every perverted teenagers, like, like thing, like it's just what, Yes. It's what they, they were us. Like they were yeah. like they were like we wanted to be them. And I said I've I've loved Matt Dillon forever because he's God to me because he sure. had these most uh wonderful people. Yeah. Um so w- when you look to the future of cinema, um and you look at kind of your your uh staple in it, because you've made a staple, you're in the history of cinema now, you know, you know, whether you're an Academy Award nominee or not, everyone is. Uh what what do you want to, what would you like people to remember you for? Like, what is, do you feel like you have that one, and I asked this to Todd Lieberman the other day, do you have that one mm-hmm. idea, that one script, that one movie story that's in you right now? You already know what it is, you just haven't put pen to paper yet that you're going to do at some point. Uh, I know I'm going to make this Western. Yeah. I know that's for sure, you know. Yeah. Um, no, but no, there isn't a one. There isn't the one That's, yet. Yeah, there, and I don't know that there will ever be. I want to okay. like keep going. You know what I mean? It really is about. It really is about um, to keep making them. It's like whatever, whatever the ne- whatever the one I'm working on is is the, is that. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Do you have a preference um, of television or or film? Like, or, right is now, all, or is it all the same? Right now, it's film. Okay. Right now, I like the solitude of it. I like the. Uh, um, you know, I prefer the pace of it. Um, there's a goal in mind, like there's yeah. like a, that you can feasibly see that's a yeah. lot sooner. Yeah, yeah. I, I did. I did the the TV grind for a long time, mm-hmm. and and you know now even in this day and age, it's still taking. It's taking even longer to do eight episodes than it took us to do twenty two. Yeah, really. You know, there's, there's shows that are taking like eighteen months to do eight ten episodes, and that's crazy to me. That's like what? I, it's just. And I, I don't like the I don't like doing the whole writer's room and then shooting the show. I think there's a uh, lot of stuff that you lose. I think when the show is in production, when there's a connection between production and the writer's room uh, actively, I think that there's a lot that that there's a lot of benefit to that. There's a lot uh, of there's a lot of you know there's just a lot of benefit to that. And also, not to mention if if I think we copied sort of more of the old network 
model. I could give you 10 great episodes. You start in June, we'll be done by Christmas. Mm. And I'll give you 10 great episodes, really good yeah. episodes. It doesn't take us. It shouldn't take us forever to do that. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, um, but right now film, that was a yeah. scenic loud answer to cool. uh, saying movies right now. All right. Uh, I'm, re- I'm ready for one pr- uh, personal question. This will probably only apply to me, you, and any la- Latinos and Latin- Latinx people that are watching right now. But um, And I, I think I just feel like you're going to be able to share this with me. One of my greatest dreams, that will never happen, unfortunately, because family dynamic is weird like that, um, it, it, on my side anyway, is Thanksgiving and Christmas with my la- Latino side and my black side with yeah. all those foods on the same table. Yeah. Right. That get to just like lick your fingers and die like a slow death because it's so good. Um, what what's some of like your favorite cultural memories growing up from both of those sides? Uh, it's funny, man. That's a great question because my situation is really unique. Yeah. So I know that I'm Puerto Rican by anecdote and by DNA test. Okay. My mother is Puerto Rican and she was yeah. adopted when she was four years old. Okay. And she was adopted by light-skinned black people because back in the day, you got adopted by what you look like. Mm-hmm. So the, I've only been able to identify with my Puerto rican claim my Puerto rican in the last, I don't know, five to seven years of my life. And it's been a really? struggle. It's been like an a, a, like a, a, a unexpected sort of like, not struggle, but, you know, um, I don't speak Spanish. Yeah, no, do I? I, yeah. I, I, I grew up black, man. I identify as black. My father's black. My side of my, on my mother's side of the family, they're black. Um, so it's been sort of a. Um, I have not been to the island, um, and this it's 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 almost as if as if I'm a a, a four year old Puerto Rican. Yeah, and uh, there's a, a a great sadness in my heart. Yeah, uh, on one side, uh, on the flip side of that, because anytime there's anything great in one direction there's also a flip side um i I was also a great joy in my heart for having for 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 being able to sort of finally go that's mine and i don't need a history and i don't need a language and i don't need i have the genetics i have the freaking science and it's in me so now it's okay to claim it now it's okay to now it's okay to i've sort of given myself permission to claim it um so you know the memories that i have you know are are not that yeah not, not, not that. And, um, it's, uh, it's fascinating because I married, I married a white girl and now I've got these kids who are, you know, my youngest daughter, she looks Latina. My oldest yeah. daughter, she looks like a white girl. So yeah. now I'm raising c- kids to, and I'm trying to have them aware of their history. I'm trying to empower them to be able to claim what they deserve to be able to claim. Yeah. Even though people will take it away from them. Yeah. Like, black, black people take my blackness away from me all the time. Yep. Cultural ambiguity is, I, I, I've been very public as a, as a curse and a blessing in, in, a, in many ways. Um, and sharing very much like what, what you have, you know, I, I don't speak Spanish fluent, fluently. Um, you know, I've been to the Island like a handful of times, but you know, if I speak Spanish, people, if I try to speak Spanish, people make fun of you. Yep. And then my black side, I'm not dark skinned, so I'm not black enough for the black people. I'm not white, so I'm not white enough for the white people. And there, there are people that always want to put these labels. And we put the labels upon ourselves, too. And yep. I think this was one thing, like, you know, we're trying to fight for equality, but we keep doing these things. And I am the founder of the Latino Entertainment Journals Association. And it was, a, it still is, a problem of having someone lead the organization founded this organization and doesn't speak the language Mm -hmm. and i and i did it exactly for that reason i didn't to show that you can be latino or latinx whatever you identify Mm -hmm. as but whatever you identify there's not prerequisites for it like that and that's what was the big thing. I'm, I'm glad that you, you spoke that cause I, I, I didn't know that about you and I'm glad that yep. now others. It's hard. Know. It's really like, it's sort of, cause I feel, I feel awkward. You know, I, I feel like a poser or sometimes, or I feel mm-hmm. like, 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 like you're not, that's not, that's not yours. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and then I'm like, nah, I, actually, yes, yes it is. Yeah. <laughs> like, look at the look at the paper, man. Like you spit in the thing and you set it in and, you know, the science actually says that it is. And, yeah. and it would be, I would be remiss for not, I don't know, 
sort of yeah. doing what I can to be like, yeah, that's mine. And that's yeah. me. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and I'm guilty, obviously, you know, myself of doing that, you know, within my lifetime as well. Like, but I just, yeah, I can, I can hear like walking down the street, like, you know, or talking to someone, they're like, oh, you don't like Yuka? You're not, you're not Puerto Rican. Yeah. Oh yeah, or, yeah. or like you like you never seen New Jack City. You're not black, you know whatever. Yeah. Like, there's just these weird things that people put as like the qualifiers mm-hmm. for us to belong. Yeah. yeah, and everybody is an authenticator. Yeah, like everybody has like the author. Like I was like, "Where's your authentication license, man?" Yeah, like who who made you the authenticator? Yeah, like who who who, who granted you that power? Yeah. You don't know anything about me. You don't know anything. But, but about take me. away something about me, like my identity, then. right? Yeah. Right. That's I gotta tell you, man. That's part of the reason I fell in love with Mudbound. Yeah. Because Mudbound is a is a spherical view at that issue, and there's six different voices in that movie. Mm-hmm. So there's an entry point for just about anybody. And it felt like Mudbound was me. Like yeah. my my grandpa on my mom's side, super light skinned, but he fought in a in a in a segregated unit in World mm. War II. His brother fought in a white unit because he could pass. Yeah. My grandfather didn't claim Negro because he was like black. Pride, he claimed ego because he thought they wouldn't send his ass into combat. Yeah. So, like, you know, and and it's just this, it's a weird swirl um, of identity. And um, it, it is, a, you, ha- I, you have to empower, one has to empower oneself. Um, I mean, you don't want to be Rachel Dolezal and claim something you're not. You're yeah, not yeah, that. Yeah. But, you know, um, you, you know, you got to be you. Yeah. Whatever, whatever that is. Yeah, whatever that yeah. is. All right. Um, at last thing, uh, and then we can let you go. Um, I always want to give everyone the opportunity to speak uh, about, uh, first of all, anything that you're just very passionate about that you feel like everyone needs to be aware of. Uh, more so, uh, you know, with the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic that's going on. And also just any, like, it, it's your soapbox. Like, please inform the world on something that they need to be paying attention to, that they're not, um, that we just should be. Yeah. I don't know. That's a tough one, man. Cause I don't want to sit up here and pontificate. Like, like I got all the answers. Cause you know, yeah. I do not, I know right now I got to keep our asses inside Yeah. and respect that. You know, I think, um, how's that going you know, for you? It's hard, Yeah. you know, but I'm doing it, you know, uh, how, old are, how old are your kids by the way? 13 and nine. So they're mm-hmm. right in the, I want my friends need my friends zone. Yeah, and, and my heart breaks for them most. I can tolerate this, you know. I, I don't. I don't mind not being around people, but it's really, really hard for them. Yeah. Um, my daughter's nine, and also that same thing. My daughter's nine. My son is five, and my son. My son's five. Um, he has he has autism. Um, huh. so he 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 like is okay with like the not going outside. Right? I mean, he's getting like you know restless and stuff like that. Yeah. But my do- my my daughter. Like she has her moments that like she, I could, I could see it. And then she shares it and she, and she also doesn't know how to express it right now. Like, yeah. you know, she, she like got, got snippy with my wife the other day and we were so understanding about it. Like normally, a normal circumstances. And you know, this, like, yeah. you got loud with your, you got loud, like what? Yeah. And we, and we had to be like, listen, we understand. And we like, we know what you're feeling. And we feel the same thing too. I think more that she needed to know that we felt it as well. Yep. So I think yep. that's, that's important to recognize that. Yeah. Um, yep. But but you said you're you're struggling with it and you're struggling with, for them. Yeah, I'm struggling for them. You know, and and I struggle personally. I struggle with depression. I struggle with some anxiety. I live in this like anger, depression, anxiety triangle. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, like I think a lot of men of color do. Yeah. Uh, uh, black men especially. Mm-hmm. Um, once I became a father, that anger piece, I couldn't sort of default to that so much that that yeah. didn't really serve me so well. So that depression piece kind of expanded a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, look, move your bodies. I think that's important. Do whatever you can to move your body as, you know, even if you're not a workout person, work out, mm-hmm. move your body, especially now. Um, I think, uh, be compassionate. And that is to say, be compassionate of, of, I think the world I think is important right now. And that feeds right into keep your ass inside. Cause that's what, that's, what's going to, that's what it's going to take to yeah. flatten the curve. I hate even saying it, yeah. you know, but let's flatten the curve. I think pray for our scientists, you know, to everyone, and, yeah. Yeah, all, all of them pray for our doctors and nurses and scientists. Hopefully it's the, we restructure after this and they become heroes you know what I mean? Teachers start to become heroes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I hope we restructure that. 
come November, yeah. come November, vote. You know, vote, vote, yeah. vote, vote, yeah. vote, 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 vote. Um, you know, and 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 I don't know. Be good to each other. We get, it's it's time for it. Hopefully, the, the the thing that would be the most sad is that we come out of this unchanged. Yeah. We come out of this and go back to being. So like, yeah, let's go back and chill. Yeah. Like, yeah. Go back to our phones and stuff. Yep. And keep and polluting stuff. everything and keep, you know, being affluent and rich and blind and, 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 and not cognizant of each other and, you know, keep, keep doing me. Got to do me. Anything yeah. I want, everything I want. I need it now. I need mine. Got to get mine. Yeah. I think that's all part of it, you know, um, and stay yeah. safe. Yeah. I, 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 I have to end on a high note because I'm a, I can't, I can't get choked, right? choked up and, and teary eyed. Um, favorite Chicago player, any sport, all time. Jordan, and, all day. No, I, well, besides all day. Jordan, besides all Jordan, day. besides Jordan, who else? Uh, who's your favorite, uh, who's your favorite Walter Payton. Walter Payton. Walter, okay. okay. Walter Payton. I named my my oldest daughter. Her middle name is Payton. I named no her way. after her. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well but Wal- Walter Payton, easy, easy. Yeah, yeah. So are, are you Chicago for everything? Every sport, like basketball, yeah. baseball, yeah. everything. Yeah, except yeah. the White Sox because I'm a Cub fan, so I don't no, like the White Sox. Yeah, well, just yeah, like yeah. I'm a Yankee fan, but I don't like the Mets. Like, yeah, know, I can respect the Met fan because, like, you know, sure. they take they sure. take a beating, but yeah, it's yeah. It is yeah. What it is. I, I can respect the Sox fan. You know, yeah. I don't have to like them though, but I can. yeah, <laughs> I think you yeah. respect them. Yeah, oh man, Virgil Williams, man. It, it, you're the best man. Dog, Thanks. it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, man. I'd Thank sit here you. and talk with you for hours. Yeah, I know. I, I, I would too, man. You, you said a lot of enlightening things. I think it's so good to have you in the industry on it with this, you know, and, you know, taking the time to just be with people as they are inside. You know, they may not be uh, all watching live right now, but they're going to watch it. It's going to be available uh, for stream again. Uh, it's on there, you know, and people were visiting, get, get some wisdom. So you offered a lot of it today and thank you very much for it, man. You, you had some special sensitive chords, man, with, with me, especially. So uh, I appreciate you. I, I appreciate yeah. you to know it. And, 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 uh, you know, likewise, keep fighting a good fight, brother. Yeah. You know? And I'll, I'll see you on a red carpet again real soon. I can't wait for the Western man. It's, uh, oh yeah, I can't wait for that either. Yeah. 2020. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to leave that up to heaven. I'm just going to keep pushing and keep trying to make the script. Call John Landis. Do you want to call John Landis for you, man? Be like, all right, listen, man. I'll have to call him up. What's up? What are we doing? What what are you doing, man? Uh, uh, Do do you, like, I I know you have a script. I know I was about to let you go, but I have a question. Like, do you have, like, a tech team in your head? Uh, specked out for, like, who would be your DP? Oh, jeez, man. There's, there's of course, a dream team, but I don't know. That's all. I, want, I, want, I wonder what that dream. I, like, who would be your dream cinematographer? D- like, Deacons. Deacons. Like, like right off the bat, like yeah. Deacons. He's just. He's been yeah. doing it. Yeah. He's yeah. he's been doing it. There's also uh, uh what's his name Bruno um Bruno Double Now. Yes. Yeah. Inside Lewin Davis. Yes. 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 And also, uh, I thought that Buster Scruggs was visually like like. I thought that was like a delectable visual treat. Mm-hmm. It just blew my mind. Oh, the way man. I I, I, I'm, I'm thinking a lot of stuff for you, man. I'm thinking like a Bradford Young. I'm thinking yeah. uh, Hoytman, uh, Hoytema, Rachel Morrison, Morrison, obviously. Rachel Morrison would be, <laughs> that would be G-O. epic. Lee Batik would be great too. Yeah. Um, he's a G. Yeah, there's a, there's, there's, there's a, there's a, I have a, I have a list. Good, good. All I'm, right. I'm, I'm building, I'm building a list. It's a, it's a serial killer Western. So yeah. Awesome. A little bit Actually, of a man. A question just came in. I can't, I can't let you go without it. It's from Ryan McDermott. It and it was, it's funny. We're talking about cinematography right now. What's your favorite Deacon's Oscar win? 1917 or Blade Runner 2049? Oh, I got, I have to say 17 just because it's, it's the degree of difficulty. Stretched it's, out. It's, I, 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 I had not. I love movies that make me feel like a kid again. We talked yeah. about like I was always that kid. That yeah. movie had me like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> what? I, I, and I saw it at the Academy. And if, when you go see Academy screeners, it's like you know, it's a bunch. There's a, there's some. It's it's demographically. It's it's mm-hmm. it's. They should stay inside. Is all yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and you know, and I and I'm I'm in there like, oh shit! Did you see? Yeah. Like you know, I I was when that that spoiler alert. But when that plane yeah. comes, um, yeah. I, I was like, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah. So I think I have to go with 17. Yeah. That was just, oh, that's great, know. man. And I've forgotten the whole premise when I'm watching the thing. Yeah, so you're, like, you're, you're yeah. so wrapped up in this yeah. technical marvel yeah. that you're like, what's like. I was like, oh, he hasn't cut yet. Oh, he hasn't yeah. cut yet. 
Oh, yeah, the cut, yeah. First, first time oh, I saw it, girl, I, first time I saw it, I'm like, like counting cuts. I'm like, digital cut right there. One, two, three. Yeah. I kind of like 14 or whatever. And then I was like, I need to watch it again because I need to remember what they were talking about. In that it was scene. bananas, man. Oh, it was bananas. So good, so good yeah. man. Yeah. Oh, good. And um, yeah, man, that, that's it. Uh, again, <laughs> Ryan said thanks. <laughs> He's LOL, oh, man. yeah, no worries, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan I'm Oh man, but uh, thank you, Virgil, man, and and we're gonna have you on again soon, like just for oh, bro, anytime. Like like you said, going back to the norm, you know, we don't want to do that. We we, we need to yeah. have people on, just not because of the pa- dem- pandemic, just general right. nonsense, you know, yeah. like yeah. talks. You know, and I'm I'm be looking forward to it with you, man. Yeah, likewise, man. It's, it's been a pleasure. Uh, give my best to your family. Please stay safe. Uh, yes, sir. You know, L.A. You know, and everyone. You know, just and you're in New York, right? I'm in Jersey City, which is right outside New York City. We really? pretty much count. It's it's rough here, but yeah, you know. Um, and I I have to give a quick uh quick shout out to my uh, sisters. Uh, my father was married before he met my mother, and their mother passed yesterday. Uh, okay. They say they say right now it's it's it, you know whatever reason, but you know it, it it's it's hitting close to home now, and we all need to just weather through this together. So yeah. Yeah. So Mama Bellin, please rest, yeah. rest well. Flatten the curve so my movie can shoot in October. Man. Yeah, I mean, we're. <laughs> I, I need a Western from Virgil Williams. I'm ready for yeah. it. I'm ready for well, it. We're shooting this in October. Oh, yeah. We'll move it over a little bit because I think we can. Uh, other way. And Journal for Jordan. That's what you're shooting in October? Yeah, Denzel's directing Michael B's in it. That's what oh, I'm really? That's Flatten the curve. Flatten the curve. Please. Good, man. Flatten the curve. Listen. By the way, that's not on your IMDb, so this is now exclusive here. So it's in the news. It's, yeah, it's on the. It's, it's a, if you click on the if you click on the on the stories like the news yeah. related stuff because yeah. uh, it's in there, but it's not. We need it on the IMDb, man. It's it actually IMDb. might be. Look at upcoming projects. Uh, actually, oh, it might be in the pro account though. Yeah, that might be it. Let me look in your pro account. I think you can get upcoming on regular. Yeah. Uh, regular, it's not there. Really? Uh, yeah, but I have the pro account and I'm looking and, uh, ch- 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 yeah, yeah. Projects in development there. Yeah. It shows up there. Got a journal for Jordan, hard knocks and crushers club. Yeah. Those are hard knocks and crushers club are dead. I guess IMDB needs to fix their recent stuff. stuff. So they're dead. All right. So yeah, we got journal for Jordan coming up. So we're looking forward to it. So, uh, we'll look for journal for Jordan 2021, hopefully. Hopefully God willing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. We're, re- we're ready for the uh, for the Oscar race again, man. Uh, to God's ears. Yeah, man. But uh, thank you again. I appreciate uh, Virgil, you, dog. Thanks to the readers, and uh, we'll see you. Make sure to follow Virgil at uh, on Twitter at Virgil Williams. At Virgil Williams. At yeah. Virgil Williams. My and, love uh, to everyone. Stay safe. Watch movies yeah. and stay safe. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Virgil, and everyone. Sure. See you at the movies. Thank you. I look forward to next.